Now I'm not above recycling some footage to save some damn time. You watched my tire changing video, right? You're like, uh, I ain't seen shit. Oh. Uh, cool. Well, the Leatherman PST is my longest serving tool, which I bought for film school in about 2001 for 30 bucks. I'm not sure. So I guess I've finally realized my dreams of working in an unrelated field and making mediocre YouTube videos on the side. So let's look at some basic dimensions while we all ponder our career trajectories. Like the dimensions closed and the weight. Length, weight, thickness. Then the length fully opened with them pliers. Yeah, looking good. How about the length open with the knife? Yep. Then the blade size and cutting edge. The PST or PST or PIST stands for Pocket Survival Tool. It's constructed entirely out of stainless steel and comes with a belt sheath that now looks like garbage but has basically held up functionally for the past 15 years. I initially bought the PST because I needed something with pliers, screwdrivers, and a knife. Plus, as always, Leatherman has an unconditional 25-year warranty. Just fill out a form, send it in, they fix or replace it. Cool dude and subscriber Lefty Hook didn't know this, and he had a beat-up Leatherman, so if you didn't know it, now you know, subscriber. I sent mine in to get the tools tightened, and it came back uh, tightened. So I've since upgraded to a Leatherman Wave, and that was because none of the tools on the PST locked. Nothing is spring-loaded, and you can only get these on eBay now. Leatherman calls their out-of-production multi-tools retired. FYI. The PST was produced from 1983 to 2004, with several revisions throughout the years. Mine is, of course, the 2001 model. That said, let's go over the features, starting with the blade. At a little over two and a half inches, the blade is sort of small, but it works well for food prep and basic cutting tasks. The handle is reasonably comfortable with nothing sharp to hurt you while you cut. And it's best to use the blade when the tool is closed because the body of the tool sort of acts like a safety stop if the blade folds downward. Instead of, you know, your finger. Multi-Tool Wiki states the blade is made out of 420HC stainless steel, which I keep sharp on my sharp maker. It takes a little bit of time to sharpen, probably about 20, 25 minutes when it's dull. The main draw for me though, with the Leatherman, is the multi-tool pliers. They are not spring assisted and they're sort of a needle nose style. They have held up well over the years, although occasionally I have seen a PST with a broken plier tip on the internet and I believe everything I see on the internet. The pliers also have a wire cutter feature, so that's cool. The pliers I've used from everything to pulling out knots and shoelaces and rope. You're like, I thought you were kind of a Velcro shoes guy. To pulling up tent stakes, like, you know, when you're camping, it's a perfect camp tool. And pulling out nails from wood or, you know, nails or screws from tires. You're like, please tell me again what pliers are used for advanced tool, bro. Or you can take the hot pot off your Coleman camp stove or Pulling nose hairs is also a good one. Okay, let's look at the other tools. Laying it out, you have the awl. I've never used it, or at least I can't remember using it. So, uh, I don't know, I guess you could start to open a knot with it. I, I don't know, figure it out. The medium flathead screwdriver. And the large flathead screwdriver. Then on the other side, a uh, two-sided file, which I have used many times. One side is for wood, the other side's for metal, or one side is coarse and the other side finer. Also, one of the edges is coarse too, so you could use it as a hacksaw potentially, but I never have. I recently read that online. I've generally used it for my fingernails and removing metal burrs off axes or my chopping tools in a pinch. So it can be used as a sharpener, sort of. Then there's the tiny tweaker flathead screwdriver tool which I use for changing channels and groups on older wireless mics. Now it's all syncing up with IR ports. 
It's perfect for that or cleaning under your grimy fingernails because it tapers to a fairly thin head. Then there's the Phillips head part. And then the bottle opener, can opener combo. I rarely have used this for anything as far as cans go, but it comes in handy when drinking beer and I definitely drink beer. Also on my revision made around 2001, there's a small metric and Merica ruler on the outside for measuring things up to eight inches or 19 centimeters. So you should be good. Okay, so over the 15 years, this tool served me well. I carry it semi-regularly when the wave is just too heavy and I need something a bit more compact for my belt. I have dropped it on concrete floors from 30 feet in the air, have used it as a hammering tool and a pinch on fast fold screens or uh, it's not heavy enough for nails, but you can use it to beat the crap out of things. A few negatives first are the non-locking tools, which seem to be mostly an issue when using the Phillips head screwdriver, as it tends to fold on hard to open screws. Now, I purchased this many years ago over a Swiss Army knife because of its more robust tools, stainless steel construction, and heavy duty pliers. And I do understand that Victorinox makes the Spirit, but the Spirit at the time was not on my radar, and it was, you know, now it's like 80 or 90 bucks for the Spirit X. And I know the Swiss Army Mechanic has pliers, but I like the size of this better. The belt holster is pretty durable, and it's survived many years of getting thrown around and wet, and the snap works fine, still. My tool is about nine or so years left on the warranty, but I try to be careful with it just in case Leatherman no longer has the parts. I know they would replace it, but it has sentimental value. You can check that on a your warranty form too, if it has sentimental value. They'll return it to you if they can't fix it. So let's do a few comparisons before wrapping it up. Here it is open next to the larger Leatherman Wave and Super Tool. Both have locking tools and are larger and heavier than the PST. I use the Super Tool as a spare car kit box. It's a little too heavy for belt carry for me, a little too big, but it doesn't do much that I can't use my PST for. There are a few things, but I'll get into those when I do a full review of the Super Tool. And that's the original Super Tool, by the way. Now my Wave is my main work tool. It has swappable bits for the small screwdriver and the large one, so it comes in handy. You can even get a bit driver for it, so it extends the bit driver further. It's come in handy quite often. The scissors are much better for trimming nose hairs and cutting fingernails, so for the ability to do gross body related stuff, the Wave wins out over the PST although the PST2 does have scissors on it. Even the diamond file on the Wave is great for fingernails. You're like, please stop. Okay, so let's look at my Super Tinker. It's more compact and it's light. It's made by Victorinox, and if you need a multi-tool without the belt carry and the pliers, it works great if you just want to drop it in your pocket and, you know, not look like a nerd walking around with a tool on your belt. It has tweezers, toothpicks, and uh, a few extra blades. Also, you can identify exactly when yours was made by looking at the date codes inside of the handle. Uh, some of the old ones don't actually have the date stamp. Okay, so if you like this review, stay tuned for more multi-tool reviews, like some old Gerbers, Swiss Army knives, and a few more from my Leatherman collection. Also, I review knives and flashlights too. I'm sure you know that. So like, subscribe, comment. Thanks for watching.